where does the courage to be a Christian come from? That was the question asked by John Piper in his recent sermon titled, The Plundering of Your Property and the Power of Hope, preached at Passion City Church in Atlanta, Georgia on January 18th. The sermon was on Hebrews chapter 10, verses 32 to 36, and here was John Piper's answer. Where does the courage come from to be a Christian? Of compassion and courage and sacrifice and love when the world is not agreeing with any of that. Where where does that come from? And the answer is in verse 34. You you joyfully accepted, joyfully accepted, joyfully accepted. The question is, where does that come from? Because joy is the strength that is carrying the day here. You joyfully accepted the seizure of your property since you knew that you yourselves had a better possession and an abiding one. The most important word in that sentence is since. Or it could just read knowing that you have because it means since. Let me read it again slowly. You joyfully, put yourself in here now. You joyfully accepted the plundering of your property because... So if you ask me, where does this joy come from? Where does this strength come from? This courage come from? This sacrifice come from? Because you knew. You Christians know that you yourselves have a better possession and an abiding one. Hope has a name. The possession has a name. The better and the eternal has a name. His name is Jesus. We hope in him. We hope for him. The better and abiding possession. Paul said, for me to die is gain. I am torn. I want to depart and be with Christ. For that is far, what's the word? Better. That's the word. Far better. To remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Got that? Do you believe that? To die is better than living. Paul did. These people did. That's where the joy came from as they went to prison. That's where the joy came from as they lost their property. You joyfully accepted the seizure of your property means your hope in the better and abiding possession is so real. These aren't just words for you. I would ask you, are they words for you? Are they realities for you? Is your possession beyond the grave more precious than anything this world offers? If it's not, you won't live like this. That's what 350 years has ruined. It has made us at home here so that this world is more precious to us than that world. Thank you very much. I don't want to go yet. Stay away. So I'm not going to the prison and I'm not going to say anything or do anything that would make this life, which is my real love, uncomfortable. Nope, not going to do it. Notice the two things in verse 34. Abiding, it's an abiding and it's a better. Abiding and better, abiding and better. Better means this life is inferior, that life is better. Abiding means this life is temporary, that life is forever. My favorite verse in the Psalms is Psalm 1611. You show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Do you hear those two words? Fullness of joy, pleasures forever. Does that sound familiar to verse 34? Better and abiding. Better, full, abiding forever. I just, let me throw this out. Anybody who can come up to me after the service and authentically, genuinely, truly offer me anything better than full and abiding joy in Jesus, I will stop being a Christian this morning. 
If you can offer me anything better than full and forever pleasure in Jesus, that's real, not made up, real. I'm done with Christianity. I am done. The reason I feel so confident and that God is honored by what I just said is that not only can't you do that, you can't even conceive of it. It is inconceivable that there's something fuller than full. And it is inconceivable that there's anything longer than eternal. So I'm totally safe. You're not coming up to me afterwards. <laughs> I mean, this is what, if there are a lot of you probably who showed up this morning, didn't have a clue, and you're not a believer yet in Jesus. You're just searching and wondering what's it all about. You need to hear me say that this hope that Louis is always talking about, this church believes in, and that can drive your life to be the most compassionate, the most sacrificial, the most risk-taking, the most loving, the most countercultural life on the planet, that hope is full and forever. And there's nothing fuller than full. These people have found what every human being is looking for. I don't have any doubt that every human being in this room is looking for the very best happiness and the very longest happiness. Happiness that peters out on me after 80 years, no thank you. Happiness that could be improved upon, I want the other one. Everybody on the planet by God's design wants the best happiness and the longest happiness. Only Christians know this, it's Jesus. Jesus died to get that for sinners. You may sit there saying, well, there's no way knowing what I've done in my life as a sinner, I could ever be the beneficiary of the fullest possible happiness and the longest possible happiness in Jesus because you don't know the crap that I have done in my life. And I say, oh, yes, he does. Oh, yes, he does, which is why this church loves to sing about the blood of Jesus because it was so infinitely costly that it can cover the very worst of lives and invite people out of the darkness of failing on every one of those five points, failing on every one of those five points into the light of full and everlasting joy. Wow, that clip was from John Piper's recent sermon, The Plundering of Your Property and the Power of Hope preached at Passion City Church in Atlanta, Georgia on January 18th. The full message is on our site, along with 1,200 other messages like this one from John Piper, see our sermon archive at desiringgod.org. On Wednesdays, we like to dip into the archive and pull out a classic clip for the podcast, and I welcome your suggestions. If you have a favorite John Piper sermon clip, whether it's old or whether it's from a more recent message, Please email us the name of the sermon and, if possible, the timestamp of when and where the clip occurs in the audio. And if we post your clip online, we will give you credit, of course. Please put the word clip in the subject line of an email and send it to us at askpastorjohn at desiringgod.org. Well, John Piper recently explained to us how he would share Christian hedonism to a friend over lunch uh, at Pizza Hut, of course, you may recall. And Andrew, a podcast listener, wants to know, how can I explain the doctrine of election to a friend over a weekend brunch? That's tomorrow on the Ask Pastor John podcast. I'm your host, Tony Ranke. Thanks for listening.